Good morning and welcome to a new tutorial. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to show you three different types of registration. What I mean by registration is when you're printing, um, you may want your uh, lino to appear in the same place on the paper each time. If that's the case, then the type of registration you use is really important. Um, so I've already done a video which I will post a link to in the description um, and that shows a really simple registration method, a corner registration method and using pins and tabs. Um, and in this video I'm going to show you three different types. So one is going to be a variation of the simple registration. Uh, the second one is what I call um, a window registration and the third one is a fixed method and that's the one I mainly use in all my work. Um, so keep on watching and enjoy. So the first registration I'm going to do is a variation on the simple registration method. So I've got a sheet of gritty paper this one has got two sides and we're going to use the blue side because I think it's a bit clearer for you to see. And then I'm going to take a piece of thin plastic. This is just um, from a folder separator or you can use acetate. You can place that over the top. Oh, you'll be able to see my camera now. <laughs> um, place that over the top. And then I'm just using some masking tape, taping it into place so it doesn't move about. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take the paper that I'm going to print on, just use the grid to help line it up so it's straight. Um, and at this point, I'm just going to take um, something heavy. So I've got this pot. You can place it on top of my paper so it doesn't move. And then with the masking tape, I'm just going to mark the edges. And this will form the registration of where your paper will go. And so line it up with the line of the grid. I'm going to do the top corner as well. <clears throat> so that is where your paper will go. Now I find it quite useful to pop a little X, let's do it with a pen, a little X there. So you know you're always lining up to this corner. And then take your chosen lino and decide whereabouts, using the grid so you know it's straight, decide where you want it. So you, you might want, want it in the middle or you might just want to have it more in the corner or at an angle, decide which way. So I'm going old school and doing it quite uniform and I'm using the grid to help me keep it straight. So I'm going to go with that. So again, just going to put a bit of weight on top. I'm um, using the tape again. I'm just going to put bottom right. So I'm right handed, so I always put my registration bottom right, so you might want to do it bottom left if you're left handed. And that's where my lino will go. And again, putting that X, so my lino will go there, and my paper will go there. <clears throat> now you may be wondering, why do you need the plastic? Um, well you don't, you could just do this straight onto the grid but this way it, it all becomes reusable um the tape is not going to tear the paper um 
you only need one sheet rather than lots of sheets if they get damaged. This becomes cleanable and wipeable. Um, and then you can just keep changing the tape and doing bigger, smaller sizes as and when you need them. So when it comes to printing, you ink up your plate, pop it there, and then line up your paper there and start printing. Now this method is mainly used for one colour lino blocks. So now for the next one. So for the second registration method, um, I'm doing what's called a window method. So I'm going to create one of these. So what you will need is two pieces of grey board. Um, these are about three millimetre thick. Um, or if you're good with a jigsaw, you could actually use uh, thin MDF or plywood. Um, so I'm just using the grey board. You need a metal ruler, a strong sturdy knife. So I recommend like a Stanley knife. Um, two strips of thinner board. These need to be um, shallower than the thickness of your lino. And also some glue or tape. Um, I'm going to be using tape. And a cutting mat underneath. So, put one of the sheets of board to one side. And I'm going to take my lino. And I'm just going to place it where I want the window to be. And I'm just going to draw around it. And then I'm going to mark where the top is because this isn't um, perfectly the same uh, width there to there. So I just want to know where the top is. <clears throat> so now I'm going to cut this away. Now if I cut um, on the line, it's likely to be bigger than this. So I'm just going to cut inside the line and then it should fit snugly so using my knife oh, mind your fingers just cut out the middle Should check that it's going all the way through. So once that's done, just check that your lino does. Oh, typical. <laughs> Made it too small. So I just need to make it a little bit bigger there and up the top. So let's just redo that bit. The joy of filming tutorial things go wrong sometimes. So, hopefully, that is big enough, and the lino sits in there. So the next step is to take um, the other piece of board, and you could glue this into place. Um, the reason why I'm putting um, a piece underneath is so you can move it around so if you're putting it through a press 
you can lift it up and move it to the press or if you need to move it to somewhere else otherwise um, if you lie those there you can't lift it up it's going to move so this bit just makes it a bit more portable now you could just glue these two pieces together um, but I don't actually have any glue on me so I'm just going to tape the top and the bottom together just so that the top part doesn't move from the bottom part So there you go, that's um, firmly in place. So the next bit is to um, decide on your margins. So you could uh, decide the margins from your lino. And then cut out two strips of filler card. This is just mount board. So decide on your margins. So let's just say I want uh two centimeter i'm just going to mark that from that side draw a line and say let's say i want three at the bottom <coughs> draw a line and then i'm going to line up these so that eventually they will be placed on there so again you can glue them into place or if you want these to be um, adjustable so you can increase or decrease your margin you could just tape them into place which is what I'm going to do And then the final thing, because um, it is slightly bigger up the top there, I'm just going to put a little X there. So I always line, when I've inked up my lino, I place it in there and I always line it up to the X. And I'm going to do the same for the paper. So my paper will go there. So eventually, ink up your lino, pop it into place, and then pop your paper, print. Now this method is good if you're doing multiple plates of the same size. So then you can just ink up each plate, pop it in, remove it, pop the other plate in, and print along. So that's a fairly simple way of registering multiple blocks. So for the third uh, registration type, um, I call it a fix type. Um, and what I mean by that is that I actually fix my lino onto a base. Um, I do this regardless of if I'm just printing one colour or if I'm doing the multiple colour, so like a reduction. And the main reason why I use this method in my work is... By fixing the lino to a board, you're ensuring that the lino stays flat because um, the lino does have a tendency to um, curl a little bit, especially the uh, traditional stuff. It also means your lino is not going to move, so all you need to worry about is where you uh, put your paper and whether you use like a corner 
or if you're using the pins and tabs method. So to make one of these, all you need is um, a piece of board. So I use a small lino, I use a grey board, and I suggest no thinner than three millimetre thick. Um, any thinner it's likely to uh, warp and that kind of defeats the object of keeping your lino flat. Um, I'm going to make this into a corner registration. So I've got two strips of card. Um, and I will glue those either using PVA or you can use double sided tape. So I will glue those into place and leave them for on the sun books um, for a couple of hours so they're really firmly in place. And then taking my so let's pretend they're glued into place. Taking my paper, I would just mark around my paper so I can then work out where my lino is going to go. So I've just drawn, I don't know if you can see the pencil marks, so I've just drawn around where my paper will go. And then taking my lino, I will then glue this into place. So this method is also good if you've got um, an irregular shaped lino. So this one was used to be um, like that. And then I just, I'm just going to chop it off. So and just play around with so I can either glue it down there or up, or up there. But I'm going to put it in the middle. It's like wonk to it. So that's where I want it. So I'm going to draw around the plate. And then if I'm using glue, PVA, I will put a layer of glue there and a layer of glue on there. And then stick it into place. And then put lots of books on top. And then I will leave that at least overnight to make sure it's properly stuck down. And then once this is all glued into place, you can decide to use it straight away. Or, like I've done with this one, if I put a, uh, a few layers of varnish, a waterproof varnish, uh, this one is called a shellac. And this just makes it... Um, clean them uh, wipeable so if any so you see there some oil ink that's got up there i can just wipe it away um so there you go a really simple way of making a thick registration so now to, so to recap the three registration types i've shown you today are the simple method a variation on it a window method and a fix. And as usual, any comments or questions you have about the um, methods I've shown you, leave them in the comments below. Bye!